Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontrar la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arruyo en el mar Samba Hello, travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. I'm your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination in the entire world. Maybe it's even yours. If not, I hope one day it will be, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music that you're listening to right now is being performed by Alberto Perez, Alberto Perez is the owner of the La Palapa group of restaurants here in Puerto Vallarta. La Palapa and El Dorado restaurants right on the south side of town are just wonderful. They're right on the beach. And for those of you who are looking for a little bit of romance under the stars, the El Dorado has this romantic dining experience. It's a package. You call ahead and you ask for it and you just basically follow this candlelit walkway to a private table right at the ocean's edge. You're surrounded by tiki torches and you're seated at that candlelit table right on the beach, toes in the sand, dining on a five-course gourmet menu. And it's created especially for you. It's served with personal attention and, well, you can have that right there in Puerto Vallarta. That is, if you go to the El Dorado. So today we're going to be talking about the basics. We're going to be talking about what to pack, the important issue of money, cell phones, data plans, that kind of thing. Those are the things that you're going to need to address before you leave the country and get yourself down to Mexico. So what are the best times of the year to come to Puerto Vallarta? Now, I have a discussion with JR about that in the next episode of the show, but In short, November 15th through mid-April are the best months to visit. Now, in June, around June 15th until the end of October, those are the hottest, the rainiest, and the most humid parts of the year. Now, I actually really like coming to Puerto Vallarta in mid-October. They call it the shoulder season, and flights are always really reasonable. And room rates are, are still at low, you know, at uh, low season lows, off season lows, I should say. Now, you're going to need to be ready for a little rain if you go there in October. Uh, but the rain usually comes in the late afternoon, and it's not all day. It's just for a short period of time. Also, if you come during that time of the year, the most popular restaurants are well, they're just coming off of their off season vacations. Many of them close during the entire month of September and even half of October. So I try to get in while it's cheap, while it's not too crowded, and while it's really not too unbearable as far as the heat and humidity are concerned if I go in October. Look, I like coming to Puerto Vallarta whenever I can get there, okay? So what should you pack? Well, think packing light, everybody. Think cool, because you're in the tropics. It's going to be humid there in Puerto Vallarta. You feel it the minute you get off the plane. Now, depending on the time of year, it can be really hot and humid or just a little hot and humid. Now, if you're a guy, you should have a nice pair of jeans for going out to clubs at night. Uh, You should have a collared shirt or two for a fancy occasion and maybe a, a pair of nice slacks and dress shoes for that fancy occasion or two. Now, if you're staying in an all-inclusive place, some of those places require that you dress up. So you're going to need to do a little bit of research before you get into town if you are staying at one of those all-inclusive hotels or resorts as to if there is a dress code. Now, you're going to need a hat, and uh, but if you forget one, you're you're going to have no problem finding one. There's 
so many vendors selling hats right there on the beach. And you're going to need a pair of sunglasses or two. But if you forget those, you know, you can get a pair of those too right in Puerto Vallarta. Now, you're going to need swimming shorts and a couple of pairs of short pants as well. Sandals are a must. And if you're planning on going on a hike, bring some tennis shoes for sure. Bring some socks, bring some underwear, lots of t-shirts. Because remember, it's going to be hot and humid, and you're going to be sweating some. So you're going to be need to, needing to be changing those shirts from time to time. Are you going to need a jacket or a sweater? Mm, probably not. It can get chilly on some late December and January evenings, but with that said, you're probably not going to need a wrap. Chances are, the only time that you're going to need something warm is going to be on the plane to and from Puerto Vallarta. Otherwise, just stow that puppy away, boys and girls. You aren't going to need them. And that pretty much covers clothing for you guys. Now, for you ladies, you're going to need some casual summer clothing and beachwear, of course. You know, especially during those hot and humid summer months, you're going to want to pack cool fabrics, the kind that dry quickly when they're moist, um, the kind that offers good ventilation, and you're going to need a few of those dressier outfits that we were talking about with the guys, especially if you're going to be staying at one of those all-inclusive resorts where you may be asked to wear something dressier during the dinner time or, or in the evenings if you're planning on going out dancing or to a nice fancy restaurant, you might want to have some nice duds to wear. You may want to bring a sweater for your return flight, of course. And you may need it also if you go out, you know, on an evening or early morning boat ride. Or, well, if you happen to get that unlikely cool evening, you, you will need a sweater or some sort of a wrap. And you should remember to pack sleepwear, of course, underwear and bras and all that other girl stuff. If you want to get a good idea as to what the current weather and the dress attire is down in Puerto Vallarta, here's what I do. Call me a voyeur, or voyeur, or whatever you want to call me. But I'm almost always going to this website, www.quatesequetes.com. That's C-U-A-T-E-S. And then the E part is Y. Quetes is C-U-E-T-E-S dot com. Quetes dot com. Check out their webcam. It's right on the boardwalk, just north of the Los Muertos Pier on the south side of town. You know the pier I'm talking about. It's where they've got this structure, and it lights up at night. It looks like a sail. It's beautiful. Well, that's where you can catch a panga also, and that panga can take you to a beach or take you out fishing. Anyway, this webcam is just pointing right down the boardwalk, and you can see how the visitors, how the locals and the tourists are all dressed in real time. You can see if they're sweating and struggling under the hot, humid, tropical conditions? Really, you can. You can watch them. You can see the sweat on their shirts. You can watch them walk down the street with a fan, fanning themselves to keep cool. So you can really get a good idea as to what's going on right there in real time on the beach, and you can see what these vacationers are actually wearing. So maybe you can mock their dress attire if you want to. Um, you can also see, which is really cool, in the summertime, you can see the thunderstorms that blow, that's just going to blow your mind. Um, anyway, it's pretty cool. And if you wait long enough and you watch that webcam, it swivels around to like a 360 degrees, right? It goes all the way around. So that happens like every 10 or 15 minutes or so. I haven't timed it. But anyway, you can see the tables that are set up on the beach. You can see the boats waiting to give vac vacationers a ride on his, pan on his panga there. Um, you can watch the people walking on the pier. And then it pans also into the restaurant, so you can see the people sitting in the restaurant. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool webcam. And I use it just for that. So I bet you're wondering, what the heck cuatisiquetis means? Well, I looked it up. And I kind of pieced it together. So... I'm going to give it a try. I'm pretty sure some listener or some reader of my blog... Oh, did I mention that my blog and my show notes you can find at 
www.puertovallartatravelshow.com. Anywho, I just know somebody is going to tell me that I have it all wrong, but here it goes. In Spanish, cuates means friends. And cuates, well, cuates can mean a couple of different things, but two of them make the most sense to me. Cuetes can either mean fireworks or a firecracker, or most likely, it's the other translation. It fits better. It says, cuetes means a little drunk, buzzed, or tipsy. So, it's either friends and fireworks, or friends and getting drunk and tipsy. <laughs> well, either way, just go to that webcam at cuetesycuetes.com. I'm going to add it to my links page right at my website. In fact, I'll add a whole bunch of Puerto Vallarta webcams to my link page, so go there, click away, and check out what's happening on the ground in Puerto Vallarta in real time. So, getting back to what to wear. Essentially, how much you pack and what you pack depends on you and your habits. Now, I'm just giving you some guidelines, so do as you wish, but just keep in mind, try to pack light. Now. Me and my wife, on the other hand, we really pack light. We try to carry just the carry-on stuff. A day pack and one carry-on bag each, if we can get away with it, of course. And that way, we can bypass the baggage carousel and head right for the immigration line. Now, that's how we beat the crowd. Another way to beat the crowd, basically to the front of the immigration line, is to make extra sure that you fill out your tourist card that the flight attendant gives you before you land. Fill it out properly. And by the way, bring your own pen, because these attendants never have enough to write with. Anyway, fill out the card properly, even on the bottom. Lots of us forget to look, but right on the bottom, there's room to fill in some information as well. Just fill it in. Then before your plane starts the final descent into Puerto Vallarta, this is a good time to hit the restroom on the plane before you land. That way, you don't have to hit it after you land while you're in the airport. You just walk right to the immigration line. Now, if I do go the travel light route, what that means is that I have to have my laundry done for me maybe halfway through the trip. I, I take it down to the local lavanderia in the morning, and if I'm lucky, I get it back the same day in the afternoon. Although there was one time I kept coming back for my clothes, and the lady always seemed to be closed. Bad timing on my part? Probably. Well, I wrote all about it in a blog, and you can find that story at my website at www.puertovallartatravelshow.com, along with all the other show notes to this episode, including the packing list, which I'm going to give you. Anyway, if you do happen to take your clothes to a lavenderia, they charge you by the kilo. They wash and they fold and then they wrap up your clothes in a neat cellophane package. It's really cheap, too, and it's pretty darn handy, if you ask me. Plus, hey, I like to give them a little business. They do a great job. Just remember, they aren't your local dry cleaner like at home. If you have an expensive, tricky-to-wash item, don't, don't give it to them. Do everybody a favor, including you, and that poor, perplexed-looking local wash lady. Leave your really difficult wash washables in your suitcase. Now, if you're not in town, or in a place where there are lavanderias, the hotels will do your laundry for you. Some are cheap, and then, of course, others get pricey, depending on the property. Now, if you're staying in a condo, you're going to either have a washing machine in your condo or a laundry room somewhere on the property. So, look, if you're in doubt, ask one of the housekeeping crew. They might be able to help you out, you know, for a reasonable fee. Look, who wants to do laundry on vacation anyway, right? Of course, if you pack lots of stuff, you won't have to think about doing any laundry. till you get home, of course. Now, wouldn't that be a novel idea? So, make sure you pack your sunscreen, bug, sp bug spray for sure, makeup for you ladies, and remember, bring your makeup. It's very difficult to find good cosmetics in Puerto Vallarta, 
or in Mexico for that matter. Bring deodorant, a toothbrush and toothpaste, brush, comb, nail clipper and file, medicines, don't forget to bring your medicines, contact lenses, saline solution if you got them, extra pair of sunglasses and reading glasses, bring your iPad or your Kindle, camera for sure, or just use your phone, don't forget your charger, and bring some memory cards with you, um, bring a good book or two, don't forget to bring an ink pen so that you can fill out that immigration and customs form on the plane, a wristwatch if you're not going to be using your cell phone, and print out all of JR's maps and bring them along. Uh, you can find those maps at my website on the links page, or you can go to JR's website at www.biartainfo.com. And remember, if you forget any of these items, you're going to be able to get them in Puerto Vallarta, really. Well, with the exception of your meds, make sure you don't forget those. Now, I also have this list on my show notes, so you can access them as well. Once again, PuertoVallartaTravelShow.com. Now, what to do about your cell phones and the Internet? If you're living in the 21st century, chances are that you've got a cell phone or a smartphone, an iPad, a laptop. Well, you get the picture. All of them have data plans, and many of them use Wi-Fi. So how are we going to use these in Mexico? Well, most U.S. cell providers have special Mexico-U.S. plans, and they include calling and texting and data. And they're not too expensive either. My plan is with Verizon, and I get, well, let's see. I suggest anyway that you check your carrier and see what kind of Mexico plan they have that works best for you. Now, make sure that you change your plan before you leave for Mexico. And don't forget to take the plan off when you get home. Now, some tips that I can give you about your phone would be to download the Google Maps of the city and the surrounding area in Puerto Vallarta right on your phone so that you can use it offline while you're roaming around. You can use this tip as well at home. I mean, do it, at, do it for your own city as well. It works really, really well, especially if the internet is down. Now, if having internet in Puerto Vallarta, in your room, is a, is a must, you need to check with the property first. Now, Wi-Fi is available in most hotels nowadays, although some places only have internet connection in the lobby. Others are going to charge you a daily rate on top of your room cost, so if you're on a budget and you need to use the interwebs, figure that particular cost into your vacation nut. And make sure that your phone is connected to the Wi-Fi when you're in the hotel, condo, or wherever you're staying. And if you need internet, check ahead, really. There's also many internet cafes in Puerto Vallarta, so if things get really, really tight, you can actually find something. Well, even in a Starbucks, for goodness sake. You can always bring a mobile hotspot as well as a backup, and I do. We all need a plan B. And... Talking about a plan B, let's talk about money. If you're coming from the United States, Canada, Eurolandia, Australia, Central and South America, forget about your U.S. dollars, your Canadian dollarettes, your European euros, your Australian dollars. It doesn't matter. Right here in Puerto Vallarta, the peso is king. It's the coin of the realm, folks. They don't want your dollars. Now, really, imagine, if you will, you're back in the States, and you're working at a McDonald's, and, oh, okay, well, maybe you can't imagine that. All right, imagine that you're working as a barista at a Starbucks, and, okay, maybe you can't imagine that either, but, look, here, play along with me. At least I'm not making you a cashier at Walmart, right? Okay, but suppose that you're at any one of these, you're maybe a salesperson at any one of these places in the U.S., and a Mexican national came up to you in your line and wanted to purchase his basket full of groceries, or maybe his fries and Big Mac, or, or his cup of frappe latte espresso presto changeo with Mexican pesos. How would you deal with that? Well, you'd look at him and you'd say, what do you expect me to do with this? 
well, what do you think they're thinking when you bring them dollars? Look, it's too much of a hassle for these shop owners to have to wait in long lines to exchange your coin of your realm that they don't want to do it. They don't. And they're going to make you pay for the inconvenience that you put them through. I finally learned my lesson when I tried to pay for a dinner in Guadalajara. Well, I used some $20 bills. And get this, I took a 30% haircut on the exchange rate. Sheesh. So what do you do? Well, money is pretty important, so let's get right to it. You need to have a plan B, a plan A, and a plan C, just in case. Now, there are people out there who insist on bringing dollars with them. They exchange them along the way, right? They bring a big stack of money, and uh, as they as they need it, they exchange them into pesos. Now, I would recommend against that. Bring a couple of hundred dollars with you for sure, but only in cases of emergencies. Remember, you're going to get the worst exchange rate for dollars anywhere you try to spend or exchange them in Mexico. The exception is at Banco Azteca, where you can exchange dollars four pesos. Uh, You can do that, but make sure that you bring your passport. Some people get pesos from their bank before they leave home by ordering them in advance. Now, banks do tend to offer pretty poor exchange rates. If you live in a larger urban town, or urban area, I should say, you can usually find a local money exchange, and they give pretty good rates, and... Listen, they'll give you a little peace of mind. If you are going to be arriving in Puerto Vallarta, you're going to have pesos already, and so that's not a bad thing. Now, it's more costly, however, because, well, the exchange rates are not as good as others, and I'm going to tell you about that. In fact, I'll tell you right now that the best way to get pesos for your trip is to use your bank ATM card at the airport. That's right, your ATM card at the airport. Now, first... This is very important. Before you leave the country, like mm, like a week before you leave the country, where you live, call into your bank. Let them know that you're going to be using your ATM card in Mexico or any other ones of your cards in Mexico. Tell them that you're going to be in Puerto Vallarta and let them know for how long. Because if you don't tell your bank you more than likely will be unable to access your money while you're in Mexico. So don't forget to tell them and confirm before you leave. Now, why do you need pesos when you arrive at the airport? Well, because if you use pesos instead of dollars to pay for your taxi or your van to your hotel or resort, you won't have to take that exchange rate haircut I was talking about that I took in Guadalajara. Now, just remember that if you pay for your airport transportation in your very own funny money, it will just cost you a little bit more, that's all. So no big deal, you guys, okay? You don't have to do the money ATM deal at the airport if you don't want to. I'm just saying that if you get into the swing of things with a little bit of practice at that airport ATM, you're going to have a more comfortable time navigating the money machines during the rest of your stay. Now, after you arrive at the airport, pick up your bags, you're going to come to an area with, well, there's these manned money exchange booths. You're going to see these people, their smiling faces, they're behind the glass in these booths, they're all along this wall. Look, avoid these because they're going to charge you a real high fee. Once again, look around and you're going to see five or six bank-affiliated ATM machines. There's the Banco Mer, there's the HSBC Bank, uh, Ban Norte, Banamex, Scotia Bank, and Santander Bank. All of those machines, they're all Mexican machines. They're all fine for you to use with your ATM card. You should be able withdraw able to withdraw up to seven thousand pesos or so, which is approximately three hundred and fifty dollars US at one time. Now, depending on the Mexican bank ATM that you use, you most likely are going to be charged between 25 and 40 pesos as a service fee, or approximately $1.50. Now, remember, 
you also are going to be maybe paying another fee to your bank, whatever they get for a withdrawal. Now, that's not bad, by the way, uh, 25 to 40 pesos, considering that I get charged $3 or $3.50 as a service charge whenever I use an unaffiliated ATM machine in the States. So a $1.50 fee, I'm okay with that. Now, my bank is a credit union, and they don't charge me to use their card at an ATM in Mexico, so that's really great. I just pay the $1.50 transaction fee. This is how you're going to get your very best exchange rate, U.S., Canadian, whatever. Now, the Puerto Vallarta Airport ATMs are all bank-affiliated, like I said, and these machines will pay out in pesos, of course. So if you see a machine, by the way, out on the street that says Cashola, turn and run, okay? Only use the bank-affiliated machines. While we're on the subject, while you're out and around town, Make sure that you use those affiliated ATMs as well and use the ones that are attached to a bank to avoid possible number skimming devices that, well, they've made their way down to Puerto Vallarta. You can also bring cash and exchange it at your hotel or at uh, Banco Azteca, but make sure you bring your passport. And also, as I stated earlier, if you are going to be exchanging money at your hotel, this is really not the best exchange rate. And same with the those little um, money exchange combio booths that you find around the town. They're good in a pinch, but hey, get with the program, you guys. Use your ATM card. Now, lastly, if you have no ATM card, or maybe you just don't want to use one of those plastic thingies, well, send yourself money using a MoneyGram. You can do it online or go to your local Walmart and open an account to send money. Now, using MoneyGram, you can send yourself up to $950 for as little as $9.90. You can send yourself up to $50 for a whopping $4.90. So, you can pick up your money that you send yourself via MoneyGram in the form of pesos at any of the uh, Pharmacia Guadalajara locations, the HSBC banks. Uh, you can find them at Walmart, Banco Azteca. There's others. And when you do send the money, you can ask where you can pick those up. But there's many, many places in Jalisco, and especially, of course, in Puerto Vallarta, Nueva Vallarta, where you can send yourself cash. You can also send yourself multiple MoneyGrams. Um, interestingly enough, so you can retrieve them as you need them throughout your trip. You can do that for up to a year. So if you want to send yourself more than you're going to need, remember, it's not a problem. You can get your money back when you get back home in dollars instead of in pesos if you have unclaimed money that you sent to Mexico. Now, it's very important to note that you're given a receipt with an eight-digit number on it. Now, you're also instructed to write the recipient's full name spelled correctly on the form that you present to the MoneyGram representative when they send your money. And that recipient must have legal form of ID that matches exactly the name on the money transfer. It's very important now. Now here's something that you should do if you use the MoneyGram method. The other day, I was in my neighborhood Vallarta Market. And by the way, if you're ever in the Los Angeles area and get a chance to go inside one of these Vallarta markets, do it. They're a blast. They're modern, Mexican. They got this huge butcher section and a bakery and restaurants inside. They have prepared Mexican food to take home. It's remarkable. Hmm. At any rate, I just asked the MoneyGram lady if it was cool to send yourself money. And here's what she said. She said, you're better off having a relative or a friend send you the money because oftentimes the money ground place where you are going to pick up the money, they're going to look at the name of the sender and the name of the receiver and they might determine that there's some sort of fraud going on and they might not deliver the funds. So bring Junior or, or your best friend to the money ground place and have them be the sender. That way, you won't be looked at sideways when you arrive to pick up your dough. Just remember, 
Keep your secret number secret. Don't let some scammer try to get the info from you. If you lose the number, or if you give it to someone else, you cannot ever get your money back. There's no recourse, so be careful with MoneyGram. It's not foolproof, but it works pretty cool. So your money. Your money plan A should be use your ATM card. Let your bank know, of course, before you go. Plan B, bring some cash and or pesos along. And plan C, send yourself a money gram or two for a backup. Hotels and many finer restaurants and shops, of course, will take your credit cards. So there's always that option. Just make sure your bank knows. Wow. <laughs> we're going a little long here. So next week, we're going to talk with JR about mosquitoes and other bugs, the best time to visit Puerto Vallarta, and everything that you need to know about arriving at the airport what to expect when you arrive at the Puerto Vallarta airport. And lastly, we're going to get you from the airport to your hotel safely. So just join us and let us be your guides. Until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and your suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, well, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. Remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartainfo.com, JR's website, and reserve your tour through him, right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition, my friends. His experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you do anyway. You're just doing it through him, as a way of saying, thank you, JR. Thanks for being our guide. It costs you no more than if you were going to use someone else. So, hey, just do it, really. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or perhaps what you didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. Next week, we're going to get right into how to prepare for and what to expect when you arrive in Puerto Vallarta for your dream vacation. So, one more favor, please. If you like this podcast, please take the time and subscribe and give me a good review on iTunes. It would be so appreciated if you just take that extra time and do that for me. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place. So, Thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Pues